Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Happy Mad Scientist. Welcome back to another video. So, this is one of my hydrogen generators. I have many. I don't even remember what iteration this is. Like four or five or something. I built it long before the YouTube days. So it's more than three or four years old. It still works, it's just falling apart here and there, a little leaky. Um, so today I'm going to do some basic hydrogen generator maintenance on my one of my best hydrogen generators I've ever built. So uh, yeah, let's get right into it. All right, so uh, I just realized that you probably actually have seen this one if you watch my, my separated hydrogen and oxygen generator video. Uh, this was here providing power for it. But yeah, it's one of my best hydrogen generators I've ever built. In fact, it's the only one that still works really well. First off, uh, I built in this little compartment here. This is just because it was wasted space otherwise. All right, so here we go. We got our batteries here. They are wired in, uh, they are wired in parallel. So that means 12 volts at, this is 230 cold cranking amps per battery. So that means it'll do 460 cold cranking amps because they're wired in parallel. And uh, let's see, yeah, we have heavy duty, uh, heavy gauge wire going into a switch here that I tore off of an old battery pack, like emergency battery uh, jump starter pack. Um, so it should be able to handle this. And then it just turned it on. Electricity flows into this, uh, this side and into the generator through the water out the other side into the battery. So uh, let's see here. The problem is, the reason I'm tearing this down is one, because it's, I need to add some potassium hydroxide so it produces gas faster. And uh, the second reason is it's kind of leaking. So yes, <laughs> not something you want um, if you can help it. So I'm going to try and just uh, recalk all of this, put some more silicone all that stuff, maybe some new pipe because the pipe does get a little hard after a while, this vinyl tubing. Um, yeah. Alrighty, so now that we got that unhooked, we probably don't want to touch them together and then hit the switch. That would not be good. Um, yeah, let me see if I can remember how I was supposed to take this apart. I believe I can. Uh, all right, gonna try a piece of good old angulamented iron. Come on. Hey, there we go. We got it, finally. Just needed some coaxing. Next part, better put on some gloves. Not that I really ever burnt myself with sodium hydroxide, it just, you get a little on your skin, then you're worried, and then it feels itchy. I mean, it's because it's burning you, but I mean, it's nothing like crazy. Okay, let's look inside here. Yep. Stainless steel is still looking pretty good. Uh, solution looks pretty good, not super yellow. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add probably a little bit of water and also some sodium hydroxide to that. Uh, I just have to find my sodium hydroxide. Excuse the mess, I did not clean this up when I cleaned up the shop. So, uh, cause this was my personal collection of uh, junk. So uh, yeah, it's a little messy yet. Let me see, I, I know I bought some. That is potassium nitrate. We got some sulfur here, matches. Strike Anywhere matches, very handy. Uh, use shotgun shells, sugar, random glass jars, baking soda, cornstarch, more baking soda, carbon. This was my other sodium hydroxide, but uh, let's see here. The audio chemical. Uh, I know I bought some, but I don't know where I put it. Not in there. Let me see here. Oh, that's helpful. Open sesame. Ah. All right, is it in here? Uh, no, no, no. Sulfur. Uh, ah, here we are. Sodium hydroxide. 
AKA lye, AKA caustic soda, AKA drain cleaner. Uh, okay, there we go. Very handy stuff for the hydrogen generators. Other than the fact that it's highly basic and uh, will turn your skin into soap if you get in contact with it um, and probably burn you some. Uh, this is probably the best one, best chemical to use next to uh, potassium hydroxide in these wet cell generators. Actually, before I put this in, I'm going to reseal this thing because uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going out of order. I need to reseal this. So, out of the way, out of the way generator. All right, so uh, I need to take this apart and just put some new silicone on. Should be pretty simple. Alrighty, now we're gonna go ahead and let this dry harden for the next 24 hours and we'll be back. All right, here we are, a sufficient amount of time later and it has dried and it is ready to install. This is my bubbler here. Looks like, uh, yeah, we used up a good bit of water since the last time. If you don't know what the bubbler's for, it's a safety feature. So, say you have a flashback where the fire comes back into the generator, not ideal. Um, but say it does happen, it'll come back into here and uh, since the, the, you don't want it to get into the actual generator because it could wreck it, make it leak, or possibly you know, blow it up and throw a shrapnel. Um, so you really don't want it to get back in the actual sealed generator. This bubbler is a really reliable way to stop flashbacks. The way it works is this is the generator. It pushes the air or the hydrogen gas into the bottom of this bubbler. It bubbles up through the water and is collected by this pipe. The, the water is important because then the fire can't get back down through the water and come back up this line into the generator. But yeah, it's a must have for this type of generator. That'll spice it up good and proper. And you may not know this, but hydrogen is actually extremely hard to seal up because it is the smallest element on the periodic table, which means it's, it leaks pretty much the easiest. It's the most slippery, if you will. Uh, that's, it makes it extremely hard to seal up. That should be sufficient. Now we will tighten this back up. Got some soapy water here. We're gonna test to see if there's any leaks. All right, it appears that we are back in working order. I'm gonna go ahead, put the lid on. And uh, one more safety feature here. Uh, it doesn't work all the time, but it does work some of the time. Check valve. It, uh, it lets you blow through one way but not the other, so yeah, make sure it's going the right way. This also helps prevent flybacks, but like I said, it's not super reliable. You don't want to bet your generator on it. There we have it. Hydrogen generator V5 is uh, all fixed. The old standby bubble test here. Let's get that going. And I'll let it purge the system for a little bit. Make sure there aren't any, any gases hanging around. They shouldn't hang around because they're it's a lot lighter than air, hydrogen. So it should float to the top. But let's give it some bubbles here. All right. Yep, 
Very loud, my ears are ringing. I didn't remember how loud that was. <laughs> Just a few little bubbles, jeez. Okie dokie, well that's hearing I'll never get back. Earplugs, ear, aha, earplugs. There we go. Okay, we're gonna try some more bubbles here with hearing protection this time. Imagine that. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, now on to a full-size water bottle. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, bucket of water, fill some bottles. The reason I use a bucket of water is uh, so I can tell when they're full. It also is a known quantity of volume, so I can measure how much, how the, the flow rate, pretty much. And then it's also kind of a safety feature, because then if any, it's all contained under water. But. So it looks like my mix is pretty good. Not too crazy, but it does fill a water bottle up in sufficient time. I could get this to where it fill it up in, you know, 10 seconds, but then it would heat up really quick and you couldn't fill larger stuff without overheating the generator. Then you just, you basically just put it in here until it bubbles out the bottom and then it's all done. There we have it. Uh, let's go up on top of the hill here. Right here on this knob. All right. I must say it's a little scary after not having done it for like, like almost a year at this point, like an actual hydrogen one. The, uh, the propane ones were not very scary because they weren't that loud, but these, whew, these are big ones. All right, are you ready? <laughs> I'm a little nervous here. Woo! <laughs> Ah, we got competition. There's neighbors shooting in the distance. So we live in an area that is like constantly gunfire and tannerite going off. It's awesome. So a lot of the neighbors don't really care that there's massive booms going off because they do it themselves. <laughs> All right, let's go again. Oh yeah. There's much more instant than a propane. The propanes, they kind of go they inflate a little bit first before they pop. This is just instant and it shreds the bottles. Instant gratification. Oh, that, one. that one was a loud oh, one. one. That was a loud one. Pick up our trash. There's lots of little bits of trash. All right, and see how it just blows them up more and there's pieces and crap. But uh, yeah. That is one of the most fun things to do. It's so simple and so easy and it's, yeah, whatever. So this thing is all fixed. It's about time because this thing has been out of commission for like a year at least. And uh, you've never seen it. So I'm glad I got to introduce you to version five. I'm gonna do a lot of these type videos in the future because I just find it fascinating. There's tons of stuff to learn and it's just, there's so many different things you can try and different variations and things you can experiment with. Um, even just like at the production end and at the, the usage end, which is the best, which is by far the best part. But uh, yeah, I'm super excited to have this back in working condition. If you wanna see more explosions, I can do a, actually I can't say, the, the E word, um, the, the, the uh, violently deflagrating, that sounds like you're passing gas. <laughs> <laughs> so if you wanna see any more violent deflagrations, if you guys wanna see it, I'll do some bigger boom booms. I just, I couldn't put it in this video because there are some legal issues, possibly, very possibly, it's probably not an issue. I'm over paranoid with this stuff. So if you wanna see anything bigger, I have to do that in a separate video that's not monetized. Um, just to be safe. I'm over paranoid because people, you know, they shoot Tannerite and monetize their videos all the time. They don't get, you know, in any legal hot water. I'm just way over paranoid. But yeah, most, most people don't know that, but it is in fact illegal to shoot Tannerite, post it on YouTube and monetize. It's very important. The monetization of that is technically illegal. Nobody really ever gets into hot water 
Uh, but that's, that's a whole separate video. <laughs> uh, that was a fake laugh. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to boost me in the mysterious thing that is the YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.